Welcome everyone. We'll get started in just a few minutes. Hey, SLP. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> it's, 50, it's 501. Yeah, hey, are we ready? Yes. I think we're ready. Welcome to Watch Me Work, where the me and the title is you. We've been doing this for 12 years. I finally figured it out. 12 years we started in the lobby of the public theater. And now, thanks to the Public Theater and HowlRound, we are able to do this on Zoom, which is so lovely, so lovely. And uh, what we do is we work for 20 minutes together, and then I take questions from you about your creative process, your work, uh, whatever you're working on, whatever your concerns or questions are. So if you have a question about your work and your creative process, you can ask Lolly to tell you how to get in touch. Hi, everyone. Uh, if you have a question and you're here in the Zoom with us, you can use the reactions tab at the bottom of your screen to raise your hand. If you have any trouble finding it, uh, you can just message me in the chat and I'll help you out. Um, if you are watching the live stream with us on HowlRound, you can ask questions by sending us, uh, sending your questions via the Public Theater's Instagram or Twitter accounts or the Watch Me Work Twitter account, which is at Watch Me Work SLP with the hashtag HowlRound. That's hashtag H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. So that's how you'll ask your questions. Fantastic. Okie dokie. And um, we're gonna start and then, uh, yeah. So here's 20 minutes.
All right. Woo All right. Question time. Right. Question time. Question time. Feel free to um, raise your hand in the reactions tab if you have a question. Looks like Rebecca has a question. All right, Rebecca. Hi, Susan Laurie, how are you? Rebecca, it's good to see you. Good to see you too. Uh, so my question is about the place of an artist statement in a pitch letter. Mm -hmm. I've never quite known what to do. I have one that I, mostly like. I've never quite known what to do with it. And um, whether it's part of the biographical statement or mm -hmm. how that works. Mm -hmm. um, to whom are you sending it? Uh, Initially agents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have um, online material to supplement it? So I, I can include links to things that have been published. Okay. And I, my website is coming back together slowly. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. To Good. emphasize the writing as uh, to forward the writing as opposed to uh -huh. the consulting. Uh huh. Just I was just thinking because often you know if you get something you know paper you know. It, it, and you're reading it or, or it's a it's an email or something and you're reading it it might be nice to have a link where you can just put a, a face to the name you know just to get like a visual thing because especially these days we're so visual you know mm -hmm. might that might be helpful so you send it to agents so I'm guessing you're being you know honest and talking about what your work is you're communicating your your passion, what's important to you, things like that. And with an eye on like how it might be, for lack of a better word, marketable, what communities it might interest. Yeah, I I have from a pre I haven't included that yet. I have from a previous query letter. So you know, I went to this website that I looked at a bunch of websites about how do you <laughs> write a query letter. And um and they said, well, you have to tell them where it fits, like compare it to something else. And I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> and yeah. so I did a little bit of that. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah. I, I think that's good. I mean, and again, it's like people, uh, you know, you think that folks would have more imagination given the exposure we have, the, the greater exposure we have to each other. But it it seems to me that people have less imagination and more thinking, what's it like? You know, because I mean, because you, you think of the things that are made these days and they're always, you know, uh, you know, Star Wars stuff coming out is rehash of something else, you know? So people want to know, uh, people in the sales business, those agents and whatnot, want to know yeah is there a market for this mm -hmm. usually the market for what we're making is connected to something that has sold before right you know unfortunately but that's you know that's kind of um how it goes but that's good but that's good so you, you thought about it's like this and the, i mean it doesn't have to be like just one thing it could be like this meets this kind of thing right mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. and and i've always i well, recently in the last year or so, I started describing it as um, part memoir, part travel oh. journal, part detective story. <laughs> um, so I figure that says more than, oh, it's like, you know, it's someplace between uh, 
uh, you know, a great migration story mm -hmm. and um, a murder mystery. I mean, like those well, things don't necessarily compute. So. Yeah, but you can add, you can actually add that on. I love that part memoir, part travel, uh, part, you know, detector story as if this work met this work, you know what I mean? Like you can also that get, really, you really got to kind of yeah. along, you know, and that's, that's not bad. That's just, that's just what we, we have to do to interest people in what we're doing, you know? Mm -hmm. And do you have a list of folks that you're thinking of sending it? To? Yeah, I've been gathering. So I get, I get uh, publishers lunch every week and okay. I do look at sort of who's publishing works that are mm -hmm. not a straight genre. I mean, you know, straight in all the senses of that word. Um, and, um, and, and look at who they are and mm -hmm. whether it looks like a good match. Mm -hmm. um, so I have about, I have seven or eight. I guess my my plan is a, some number of agents, and then you know, you know, pack with it, try publishers. Uh huh. Uh huh. And then that you know, we'll see. Uh -huh. It sounds good. It sounds like a great plan, Rebecca. No, oh, thank you. So what are you thinking? Like, you thinking you could improve on on your plan? It sounds like you're doing everything right to me. I, you know this. The, the kind of market part of it, and that suggestion about, you know, this meets that in the light of the, the way I've been sort of describing it um, makes, makes it easier to think about the marketing part of it. Because mm -hmm. um, I really, right now, I have none of the marketing in there. And, and, um, and I really, I just want, what I really want is for them to get the flavor of the, manuscript before they get to the 10 pages jammed into uh, an email. Right, right, right. I mean, it looks bad. I mean, as much as I try to make it look good, there's no way of making 10 pages look good in an email. Well, what do you mean? Well, I mean, because depending on the size of the page they're reading it on, it'll just, it'll, it'll flow, but it's not double spaced at this point as because double spaced in an email is even harder to manage, I think. Um, and oh, go ahead. no, I'm, I'm so anyways, mm -hmm. I want them to get the flavor of it before they get to the, the pages. Right. What about sending them a, an attachment like a PDF? Yeah, no, they say no, no attachments. No attachments. No attachments. Put 10 pages into the body of the email. Every one of the agents say that now. Oh, and, I wonder yeah. why that is. I, I don't know. I don't understand why that is. Probably because people sneak in the whole book. <laughs> That's an attachment. Oh, so. But then the, the, the agent only has to read 10 pages. I don't understand the agent mind. <laughs> oh, nor do I. Nor yeah. do I. Huh. Trying, trying to do what I'm told. Yeah, that's time. okay. Oh no, okay, okay. That's that's f fair enough. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think. Um, what else can we do to make it, you know, more successful? Um, you know, do you do affirmations? Mm, not really. You look like you look like <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, uh, but you don't like them. Well, you know, I I try to do a gratitude practice. Okay. But sort of straight up affirmations, I I, I mean, I do a meta practice, so I guess that's as close as I get. To right. It's not. It's not your thing. Mm -mm. Their affirmations aren't your thing. No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I just, you know, full disclaimer, I appreciate very much affirmations. Um, 
partly because uh, <laughs> they don't cost anything. I love them because they're free. Um, and um, the alternative is, to, to my mind, this is just a personal, to my mind, what I call, you know, negativity. Mm -hmm. And, and that is, that can lead to some toxic thinking in my mind, in my personal mm -hmm. practice. Uh, I interface with the uh, marketplace, you know, on a daily basis, hearing, you know, all kinds of shit from people. Um, and uh, my affirmations sort of allow me to to remember, you know, what's really going on. Mm -hmm. So, so it's kind of a it's like a it's like a power a power tool or a sword or a a shield, you know, that the in my belief, you know, that the spirit provides me to maintain my good feelings about my work mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of what i do and it's free again you don't have to buy anything you don't have to subscribe to some weird bleh, where people are sending you shit in the mail um you don't have to you know you know pay you know pay somebody venmo every time you do an affirmation they're free so so they're and i find them i find them useful and again the alternative is uh uh to take in some of that stuff um because like just so what you say you know this is a suggestion you know um there's no way to make 10 pages look good in an email i think there that you could you could they open up your email and they're going to be really uh enthralled with your writing uh, i see it doesn't cost you nothing you know what no. i'm saying they open up my email, they're going to be captivated by the idea of the story, and they're going to be like, wow, enthralled with the writing. Just expecting something, some good feedback is, is uh, I find very helpful. So, but it sounds like you're doing everything right, Rebecca. You know, it sounds like you're, you're writing a great uh, letter, you know, of introduction. Um, it sounds like you're, you're, you're really, I mean, you've done a lot of research to, to get sort of the right angle on it um and it sounds like you're going to be sending it to the right people and it, and you certainly i know you've done the writing work so mm -hmm. it sounds like you're sort of positioning yourself setting yourself up for success uh well i will i will add the you know there's a so meta is a buddhist practice for folks who've never heard of it and it's four different phrases, sets of phrases. And there's one that's um, uh, wishing good fortune to myself and others. So I will, I will add more of that to, and I'll, I'll try to send my emails with some, some. Uh, yeah, that's fortune. beautiful, sister. You can amplify that. You can turn it up. Yeah, I could turn it up. I really could. Yeah. I mean, that's so beautiful. <laughs> I wish I wish good fortune to myself and others. That's beautiful. You know what I mean? It's not it's not weird or selfish or, or you know, it's very very beautiful and very and if you crank that up, you're also wishing more good fortune to others. So mm -hmm. do it for my sake. Okay, I will. <laughs> wishing good fortune. <laughs> I'm Zoom, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll I'll add watching work to my. That into the things that I say, and I'm going to be thinking of you. And everybody on the Zoom. How about that? That that works. <laughs> yeah, what are the other three? So it's um, loving kindness, compassion, um, good fortune, and equanimity. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Sure. Thank you so much for that, Rebecca. <laughs> uh, we really appreciate that offering. Jay List looks like has a question. All right. Yeah, I like the idea of affirmation. I have something in my mind about what you mean, but I would really appreciate it if you could give us an example of what you mean when you say affirmation. Sure, sure. Great question. Great question. Um, my affirmations come from, I mean, they're not, uh, it's not a, a specific, like a part of a, a beautiful tradition like the Buddhist practice. Um, they come from any time I catch myself saying something like, 
oh, gee, that's going to be really hard, for example. I am, am, am really working always to kind of turn it around. Or, gee, for example, um, gee, this meeting is going to be really hard. They didn't like what I said last time, for example. You know, hey, this time the meeting is going to be great. These people are going to love my ideas. And even if they give me notes that at first seem difficult, I'm going to find the great note underneath the note. Or every note they give me is a great note. I, I've said that many times to myself as a mantra when I go into meetings. Every note is a great note. Every note is a great note. You see what I mean? So it, it kind of turns it. I, I am affirming the, the, uh, the positive in a situation. Or if you're going out uh, on a date, you know, oh, I don't feel so great today. I don't look great in this outfit. Hey, I'm going to sit there. We're going to have a wonderful time. I'm going to really enjoy this person's company. I'm so glad that I'm going on a date, for example, you know, like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, I was trying to wait for the host to unmute me, but that does, exp that does explain it. And, uh, I'm going to think about that. And that sounds like something I really want to do more of. So thank you very much. That was clear. That explained it. And uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. Well, you know, I, I got to say that we are, you know, a lot of us are conditioned to, you know, like my dad would always say, you know, I mean, lovely man. I'm a realist. He'd say, I'm a realist. You know, <laughs> bless his heart. Um, yes, yes. And, you know, so he he didn't want to sort of, you know, say things that weren't realistic. Um, and uh, and he, he did very well with his life. And, you know, he's passed away several years now. But we kind of don't want to be too big for our britches or don't want to dream too big unless we'd be disappointed. Um, but again, what I found is that it is a wonderful alternative to uh negative thinking yeah i i think i need to practice exactly what you're saying mm -hmm. when i go to these various meetings and i'm like oh god <laughs> you know? what i'm sorry i didn't hear you i go to these different meetings and i walk in thinking oh god you know i don't really want to do this but i think that it would be a lot better if i did an affirmation and thought about it before i got involved so thank you Mm -hmm. It's a lot for me to think about, and I think it's really positive, and that's what I want to do. I want to be on the positive note rather than the, you mm -hmm. know, the unpositive note. So thank you. I hear you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Anyone else have questions? Looks like we have one from Linda. Hey, Linda. Hi. <laughs> um, uh, I'm really glad <laughs> to to uh, visit your class, and um, um, I've visited your class um, seven years ago in public theater really long time ago and it was so an amazing experience and i had follows um followed the um the zoom uh, um meetings uh, as a blind passenger <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, my question is sort of um, linked to what you have said um, before, um, I, I, I ask myself how I can um, um, work on um, yeah, negative uh, experiences to, to transform then the, that experiences into into something positive uh, uh, through art. As a, through, I'm not a writer, but um, 
uh, that 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 that's at the moment my uh, main uh, question. Um, how, if it's possible to achieve that, or or maybe how uh, how I can push myself to to get in this direction uh, to get rid of that stuff uh, happening around me. Maybe I sometimes cannot uh, react on and uh, to uh, transform it uh, through my work mm -hmm. uh, to some something um, productive mm -hmm. that that's my question yeah, no, <laughs> it's a beautiful question and it's I think it's completely possible and I would say that that is the great in my experience that's the great gift of our work you know what i mean that that it is a mechanism it is a thing through which we can transform our experience um i found uh, over and over again that my work is how i can help myself and wonderfully enough an added gift other people move through uh experiences whether negative or positive or, or, or neutral, you know, um, I feel like that's what, I mean, I, I look at when I think, and I, when I think of, we well, you know, you, you I, I look at paintings like Basquiat paintings or, or Picasso or whomever, you know, great artists, um, uh, you know, Georgia O'Keeffe or, or, um, uh, Frida Kahlo, you know, all great artists. And you think they're helping me process something, you know, and that's the great gift of our, of, of our work whether it's writing or painting or sculpture or song or essays or dance or raising a child or whatever, right? That's, that's the great thing about our work, our life's work, you know? So I would say it's totally possible. You're totally on the right track. And what is the work that you would like to do? What's, what's your, what's your chosen form? Uh my form at the moment is as well, the last piece i've done was a sound collage collage uh, and uh, photos i have uh, done under really special circumstances and um uh and i did put all this together and this was such a uh, ex also impressive experience at uh, the weekend of Occupy Wall Street, and oh. uh, and that was the last thing. And now um, I'm kind of working on that uh, other material, but also uh, uh, started to write a letter to a person whom I really appreciate <laughs> and um, and uh, I, the new piece I have no idea what what's coming next I, I just thought a kind of a mixtape or oh. uh, something I, I really don't know uh, so this was so stressful to do the last work <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah the, the also at the moment kind of uh, video mixtape stuff <laughs> but that's so that sounds so great that sounds so great I mean I would just say like maybe ha have I mean we're talking about affirmations today but have part of your you want to affirm yourself you want to say yes to what you're doing right so you can say you can first say yes in many ways you can say yes by finding a particular time every day to, to do your work Right. Do you have a, a time, a specific time during the day where you do your work? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you just, you just time. I mean, I hope you don't work like, you know, on your a day job 24 hours a day. I hope you have a little pocket of time. I, I usually pick my favorite time of the day. So for me, it's morning, but some people enjoy the evening or the night or lunchtime or whatever you pick just 20 minutes mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. you sit down you have your timer and you sit down and you spend just 20 minutes just thinking about it or writing in a notebook about what it might be 
just mm-hmm. give yourself some time. That time oh, over the months you do this, that time can then grow to maybe an hour. You're spending an hour a day. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm writing down what might be interesting to you, listening to music that might be interesting to you, sitting and just thinking about it. Mm. And if you show up for it, it will show up for you. It will start to, you'll start to have a communication with it, right? You'll start to feel comfortable about working on it. You know, you'll get, you'll start to get energy from it, but you have to sort of be consistent. It's like, it's like a a relationship. You know, if you're going out with someone, they, they want to know that you're there for them. You know, your work wants to have the same feeling, Mm -hmm. you know, yes, Linda is showing up for me. Okay. I'm going to show up for her. We're going to, we're going to create a union and we're going to work together Mm -hmm. to create this. Um, You just have to be consistent with it. Uh, You don't have to have all the answers. You just have to keep showing up. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Presence. Mm -hmm. You're showing up. That's why we do this. You know, we show up, we sit here, we have Mm -hmm. the time where those kinds of habits are really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, You affirm, you say yes to your process Mm -hmm. um, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the form of it will come to you. The overwhelming feeling might come, but you're, you're going to be sitting there with yourself mm. and your work and it will not fail you. Mm-hmm. That's what we're here. I, I feel that's what we're here for. We're here to do our thing. You know, we're here to do our thing. Um, so our thing wants to, wants to be with us, you know, in my experience, it, it, the thing always comes through. If I, if I show up for the thing, that thing, whatever it is, it always comes through, you know? Okay. Where are you call? Where are you, where are you, do you live? Uh, in Berlin. Huh? <laughs> okay. I, yeah, I have great love for, um, for, for Germany. My husband is, is from Braunschweig. And oh, from Braunschweig. Oh, I see. Wow. Yeah. So you're from Berlin. Okay. Okay. Well, well, you know, next year we're going to go over and visit. So we'll look you up. So have some, some installation or something so we can go and like, yeah. Sell. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Linda. Awesome. We have like 10 minutes left. So we have time for another question or two. Mm-hmm. Lynn. Hey, Lynn. I'm sitting in sunny Los Angeles with my best friends, Winnie Holzman, who's a great writer, and um, Paul Dooley, her husband, who we used to write together and work together. And, um, you know, I, my question, it really was an effort uh, an emotional effort to get on a plane and and be with my friends who I miss so much. So that was, and it's the same thing about writing. It's It used to be an effort, but since I've come regularly uh, to your class here, it's not an effort. It, does that make any sense? I have an hour a day, you know, I write, and I realize I don't have a goal for the writing. Mm-hmm. I don't have a goal. Um, and when you were talking to somebody just now, I realized my goal actually is just to tell my family's story, not a big goal, but just, you know, so it's it's down on paper, you know, mm-hmm. these people who have peopled my life mm-hmm. and um, uh, it, the wonderful and the heartbreaking, you know, all, all everybody's human story, mm-hmm. but um uh, I, so is that enough of a goal? I love you, Lynn. I love you. You have been a constant star in this Watch Me Work process. Girl, you have shown up, you know, in the lobby of the public theater and for so many, so many years. What a beautiful question. Is that enough of a goal, girl? 
Well, first of all, goals are scary because once we set the goal, the, you know, in, in my experience, the question is like, ah, I might not make it. You know what I mean? Once we say the goal out loud, oh no, I've said it out loud. I it's a beautiful goal. Yes, it's a beautiful goal. And then we can affirm, we can basically what I'm doing right now for you in response to you, we then will do for ourselves, right? Yes. It's a beautiful goal. It's a worthy goal. It's a noble goal. It's a great goal. Oh, thank All you. And more. It's a beautiful goal. Yeah. Here you are. You're going to sing the song of your family. Yes. Going, yes. Yes. Yeah. How fantastic. You know, I, you know, I'm so inspired uh, Paul Dooley, we you, we work together, and also Paul is ninety five now, and he has written. He writes every day. He has written uh, this book, this uh, you know, this screenplay, this play. I mean, he's he's such an inspiration mm -hmm. because his creative life is still informed by his heart, mm -hmm. and he's still so creative. You know, and so I'm sitting here in, you know, a creative nest, you know, <laughs> take long. So I'm very lucky, I think. And I just, anyway, I love you a lot. Love you too. So proud of you. Look at you showing up every day. And sure, I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't feel like an effort. It feels like, oh, just something you do somehow when we let, when we just allow ourselves to go forward, you know? Yes. Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, I realized what it meant to me to have their story down, just that it's down the family, you know, uh, uh, it, it concretizes their lives, you know, they lived lives and it's very uh, moving to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Keep going. I will. I, you make me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lynn. Thank you. Uh, we have one. We have time for one more question from Marta. Hey, Marta. Hey. Thanks so much. Good to see you and everyone. Um, this is another sort of more spiritual question, maybe, but um, it's similar to the affirmations, maybe, but. Um, I'm kind of in, I'm kind of very stuck um, because a shit ton of stuff is happening in my life. A lot of endings um, after, after a long time, kind of asleep, I'm basically awake to a whole bunch of stuff, um, but a very long relationship has, you know, has been ending for the last few months amicably, but um, I'm sort of moving out this week. I'm probably going to leave the city I live in uh, because it's like, London it's super expensive and um that can be really exciting but it's uncertain and to top it all up I mean even like my therapist had to like leave me like everything's like ending um which is I hope this isn't too personal but to contextualize um and to top it all up I recently had um like I basically fell in love with someone at a writing residency um and it was beautiful. It was the most, um, you know, alive I've felt in years and all that. But, um, but I had to say goodbye after a few weeks because, like, it's a different continent and like I'm going through the grief of that and like the heartbreak of that. And there's a beautiful, you know, there's a beautiful intensity in feeling all these things, but it's a lot. Um, and basically, I'm like completely not in my practice at all. I'm not even consuming art or being, I'm not like able to read. There's just like so, so, so much going on. Um, mm -hmm. And like part of me is okay with that because sometimes you're living. And for me, sometimes like when I'm living, like when something's either really good or really bad, like I don't really have the headspace to create anything and that's fine. But I do feel like um, I'm a bit, um, I don't like the lack, of, like I'm getting a little bit skeptical like I've been working on a novel for a few years and I, I feel like um, it's fine that I'm not working on it now because it reminds me of this whole residency and like it's a bit of a mess right now, the novel, but I'm, it feels like everybody has book deals left and right. Like I'm a little bit 
to in the Instagram mindset of it all. And it seems like everyone's doing stuff. And um, I'm noticing this in myself where I usually had my daily appointment like in the morning to make things. And I'm excited to branch out into visual art as well, but I'm feeling like everything's a mountain to climb, you know, I'm like, I need to learn all those skills in order to even do this for five minutes. And anyway, this is kind of where I am. So um, I don't really know where to begin to like rehab or something. And I don't need to be like writing right now, but this doesn't feel like, you know, right. Right, right, right. I, I know I totally hear you, Marta. And I'm listening to you. I just, uh, suggesting a couple of things they might be helpful um uh a lot's going on it might be helpful to go without something um uh, instagram and all the other ones uh and maybe even step it out a little bit more and just take a take a what's called a dopamine fast you know to, to you know only use your phone for you know, communications with your friends or phone calls with your parents or, what, what, you know, whatever. Um, and don't, you know, take it, just maybe take it, try it a day at a time or try it a half a day at a time if you really feel, you know, um, but I would try that. And do you have a meditation practice? Um yes i'm not really in it right now i haven't done it for a while but i used to do it every day okay well i would say get back into that <laughs> definitely because if you if you have a very vibrant artistic practice very vibrant work practice and and these two and you're doing a lot of instagram which creates anxiety uh, from what you say you know it create, creates a feeling of, I'm connected to everybody. Oh, no, look at everybody's book deal. Ah, that's horrible. Um, so I would turn off the Instagram and turn on your time with, uh, on your meditation. I point there because that's where my meditation cushion is. Turn on your time with your meditation cushion. Definitely. And um, maybe some you know, 20 minutes a day of journaling. It's not, you know, you're hardcore working on your novel, but it is just letting your thoughts just run. Um, you know, and yeah, I mean, journaling, meditation practice, and leave the the social media alone for a little bit, um, so you can find your feet on your path again. You know. Okay. Yeah. Definitely the meditation, though. That's probably the most important thing. Thank you. Okay. And, and good luck with everything. Thank you. Affirmations, you know, affirm yourself, you know, pat yourself on the back more than you kick yourself. You know, tell yourself you're going through your stuff and you're going to be okay. You know? Thanks. Yep. Come on, Jen. Well, that puts us at six, everyone. Thank you so much for another fantastic Watch Me Work. We'll be here next week. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Have a good week. Bye. Thanks, Lala.